Today we'll be making a keyboard PCB for the layout that I have up in the KLE on the left here. And we'll be using a standard diode matrix as well as a Pro Micro controller, um, similar to my last video. So using KiCad 6 here, and I'm using the Marbas Lib libraries. Um, I'll have those linked in the description. I'll make a new project, let's just call it video PCB and open the schematic. First thing we want to do is add our Pro Micro controller. Now there isn't a Pro Micro footprint or a symbol in the Marbas Lib libraries, so we'll just use the generic connector 02 by 12 top to bottom. That'll be our Pro Micro footprint or uh, uh, symbol. And then we'll go ahead and add some switches and diodes. So let's add a, uh, in the Marbas Lib library, a MX switch. You can do either do hot swap or soldered. I'll be doing a soldered PCB for today. So we'll grab that soldered switch and we'll go ahead and add a diode. In KiCad, these are called just D, D for diode. I like the small version, so that's D small. We'll grab a D small, and zooming in here with the scroll wheel, I'll rotate that so it's pointed down and connected to one side of the switch. This is our unit uh, for a switch plus diode, and every switch will have a diode. Uh, that keeps um, the keyboard from ghosting when multiple keys are pressed. We'll go ahead and copy this a um, couple of times. Let's find a good spacing you like. Um, go ahead and move these over over here. I need, according to the KLE, keyboardlayoutediter.com, again linked in the description. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, ten keys across. Uh, that's on three rows, and then the bottom row here, this is like an alternate spacebar layout, um, has eight keys, but with this it makes it nine keys. So we'll go ahead and do four rows of ten, and then we'll delete one of the keys on the bottom row. So that's three, Using Control C, Control V here to copy and paste multiple at a time. Six. That's nine in a row. We'll grab one more. Oop, just grab this one. Hold down Shift and click to select multiple elements. Control C, Control V at the last one. Now we have one row of ten. We're gonna Control C, Control V that four times to get our four rows of ten. Two, three, and. Four, and we only need nine keys in this bottom row. And we can see like the key density in the middle is gonna be a little bit less dense. So I'll go ahead and take one of the keys from the middle out of this electrical matrix. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and wire up my columns and rows as well. Um, I know that the Pro Micro has, what is it? 18 pins of IO and with a 4 by 10 matrix, we're going to use 14 of those pins. Um, so that's 10 columns and 4 rows. Uh, so we'll have plenty of pins left over. Uh, we don't need to use all 18 of them. Of course, there are more than 18 pins on a Pro Micro, but those are used for like power and reset. We're not going to worry with those today. So I'm connecting all of the free ends of the switches together in columns. And the way I have them set up on a grid means that I can just make one giant wire from top to bottom. Um, you can and probably should also just click from each point to point. Click, click, click. Uh, but it just saves a bit of time. If you misclick like this, escape to quickly get out of making the wire without getting without um, exiting from wire making mode. The wire making mode is here on the left, uh, or on the right, sorry. It's this uh, black diagonal line. All right, so that's all the columns lined up. <clears throat> Let's do a rows. So we wanna connect each diode um, on its free end to the diode next to it. But we don't want to connect the the column trace and the road trace. We want to leave these disconnected. If they were connected, you'd see a, um, maybe you won't see a dot. You'd see a dot show up like that. 
uh, that's not what you want. So let me undo that real quick. Control Z to undo and enter wire mode by hitting this button or just by hitting the W key on the keyboard. If you pass right over it, you won't connect it. Actually, it's quite difficult to make these connect. <laughs> let, me, let me delete that. I'm sure I didn't connect that by accident. Okay. You can also use labels um, so you don't have anything overlapping each other. Uh, we'll get to using labels in a little bit. So let's connect all these rows up. Same trick here. I'm just going to do it all at one time. There's a little like, free end here. Try to delete that. Yeah, that works. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for now in the schematic. We'll do more later um, as, as far as making the schematic. Now we need to assign footprint designators or references, sorry. Um, so here is like J question mark and we have SW question marks. It stands for switch and J for connector. I don't know. Um, whatever KiCat says it is. We'll go to this button at the top. Uh, it says fill in schematic symbol references uh, with designators. And I like to select uh, sort symbols by Y position. That makes it so the symbols are read from like left to right. The default is top to bottom, but it's all to preference. Um, all the other um, settings here should be the default and we'll hit annotate. Wonderful. Now all of our um, switches and diodes have their own numbers and they should be lined up one to one, like switch 15 goes to diode 15. This may not be the case, especially if you have alternate layouts or, or a different kind of matrix. It's not an issue. Um, it's just something to keep in mind that when they line up one to one, it's easier to keep track of. The next button we'll hit is the Run Footprint Assignment Tool button. Um, this will bring up a window uh, that has footprints on the left, or the footprint libraries on the left, the symbols in your schematic in the center, and then um, whatever footprints are in the library you've selected on the far right. Personally, I feel like these should be arranged differently, but this is the way KiCad comes stuck. So I'm gonna go down to, uh, oh, so sorry. The first thing we notice is the diodes don't have any footprints attached to them. So I'm gonna select the first diode, hold shift, and select the last diode. Then I'll select all of the diodes. Then I'll go down to diode SMD, which is surface mount. You can also do through hole diodes, but a very common, um, SMD footprint is the diode or the DSOD one two three the SOD one two three um, very cheap uh, very abundant diodes uh, they're also really small um, so let's use those uh, you can get these on JLC PCB for assembly for very cheap um, less than like a quarter of a cent or something like that and one one cent each. Um, for the connector O2 by 12, I said this was our Pro Micro. Um, Marbast Lib Various library has a Pro Micro footprint. Um, let's view that. So this footprint has uh, pins 1 to 12 and then 13 to 24. Um, this numbering, it does not match per se the Pro Micro uh, numbering on your uh, silk screen. I see there's like D1, D0, D4. The numbers here I'm talking about 1 through 12 and 13 through 24 are what matches the schematic uh, for that connector footprint. That top, to, that top to bottom connector footprint also had the same kind of layout. So we'll grab this um, Pro Micro footprint from Marbas with various. Now um, we have to assign footprints for our switches. We have 39 switches here, right? It's four rows of 10 minus one, so that's 39. And let's open our uh, thing here so we can see which switch corresponds to what. Now, in the schematic, the switches are laid out uh, as you read them left to right. Uh, and we did that when we assigned the designators so 1 through 10 is the first row, 11 through 20 is the second row, and 21 through 30 is the third row. 31 through 39 is the uh, last bottom row. So let's pull up our um, KLE and our footprint assignment tool at the same time. And so we'll just go through and see which ones, they all default to 1U, but we know that some of them, um, namely 
these keys, and these will be different on different keyboards. Let's go ahead and change this key color so we can tell. These are not 1U keys. These have different unit sizes. So this is switch 10. It's the last one in the first row. So we'll go to switch 10, and we'll select the uh, switch size that matches um, the KLE. So that's a 1.75U key. You can tell in KLE in the width field, it tells you the units there. So we'll go MX 1.75U, and then switch 11 is 1.25U. Switch 20 is 1.5U. Switch 21 is 1.75U. Oh, that was switch 12. Let me change that back. Switch 20, 1.5U. Switch 21. 1.75U. Uh, this is switch 30. We'll do 1.25U. Sorry, that's 31. 31 is 1.25U. 32, 33. I'm going to call this, let's see, what do we, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So 31, 32, 33, 34 is um, a stabilized key, so we'll keep that at 1U. 35 and 36 are also stabilized keys, so we'll keep that at 1U. And 37, 38, 39, the last key will now be 1.25U. Okay. So we've mentioned stabilized keys now, and uh, yes, it, these spacebar keys that are more than 1.75 than 1 units uh, require a stabilizer. So I need three stabilizers, and we can add those to the schematic, and then assign footprints to those as well. So hit A on your keyboard to add things to the schematic and find a stab. That'll also be in the Marbas lib uh, symbol library. We'll add three stabs. And it doesn't really matter which one's which. Um, we will annotate the schematic with reference designators. And we'll run that tool again to assign footprints. Let's find those stabs. Here they are, MX stab. And in this case, we need a two unit stab, a 2.25 unit stab, and a 6.25 unit stab. So let's find that Marbaslib library. We're using the P for plated stab. So let's do MX plated 2U and MX plated 2.25U. And then the default is 6.25U. That's perfect. All right. Until we wire the matrix, we're done with the schematic. So let's save this with Control S and open the PCB using either this button, uh, the green button in the top row, or by going back to the KiCad main window and opening the PCB from there. Here we can update the PCB from the schematic. It's this half tan, half green button with the red arrow in the lower left hand corner. It's also the F8 key, so I just hit F8 on my keyboard. And um, these check boxes have good uh, like hover over uh, helper text. You can read through those in your own time, but I like to keep them all three checked because I like to keep my schematic and PCB in sync with each other at all times. We'll hit update PCB and it will attempt to populate things in a way where nothing's overlapped. And it usually does a good job of making sure nothing's overlapped, but it is most definitely not in the right order. So I will hit M to move and move it off screen until we can get things in order. I'm gonna bring up my KLE on the side here just so I have a good reference for where the keys go. And I'll bring my um, PCB editor window. There we go, that's a good split. Now, we also need to make sure we're doing it switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four, switch five. And actually the easiest way to do that is to use the schematic editor and just click switch one and have it highlighted. When you alt tab, to your PCB editor, switch one is now going to be in the center of your PCB editor. 
and you can just simply hit M to move, and we know that that is switch one. We're going to also tell it switch one because when this switch is selected in the bottom left hand corner of our schematic or our PCB editor, it says SW1 um, and SW1 found uh, in kind of the information banner on the bottom. We're using a grid of 0 0.79375 millimeters. That is 19.05 millimeters divided by 24. Um, 19.05 millimeters is exactly three quarters of an inch, which is the standard MX spacing for switches. And dividing it by 24 means that we can get um, fractions of units like a 1.5 or 1.75 key, and it still be on the grid. So let's find switch two by going back to our schematic, clicking switch two and alt tabbing. Moving, zooming out, panning with middle mouse, zooming back in and placing it right next to the switch one. I'm gonna go ahead and do this quickly and I'll see you in a second when all these switches are placed. All right, I have all the switches placed and um, it's quite busy with all these air wires, so I'll go ahead and turn those off now. Uh, or rat's nest. Rat's nest or air wires, they're both the same thing. Um, you notice that these three 1U switches correspond to our uh, 2.25, 2, and 6.25U spacebars. Um, but we haven't placed them yet because I want to go over something with you. On the stabilizer footprints, there is a little uh, gray corners, these four corners, and a purple cross in the middle. These correspond to where a switch footprint needs to be for the stabilized key uh, to be complete. So you have the stabilizers each side and the switch in the middle. And that's true for um, any combination of switch and stabilizer. Now the stabilizer footprints uh, from Marbas, the plated ones, have these um, gold circles and the blue circles. The, the gold circles are uh, the screw holes for screw and stabilizers. And the blue circles are the holes for the clip on the wire side of the stabilizer. So um, for spacebar keys, most keyboards, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip these keys around 180 degrees so that the screws are on the outside edge, the bottom edge of the keyboard, and the, uh, the wires are towards the top edge. I'm going to consult my KLE again to see which space guards, which uh, goes where. So the 2U is on the left here. Oh, man. Well, that got zoomed out weird. And the 2.25 is on the right with the 6.25 straddling them both. So if the 2.25 uh, is on the right and the, and the 2U is on the left and they meet up perfectly underneath the B key, I'll go ahead and put switches in those footprints. Now the 6.25 uh, we'll go in the middle of them, but I want it to line up along the edges of the two 1U keys that straddle the split space bars. Let's go look at the KLE again. So there's 1U keys that straddle the two split space bars. I want the side of the 6.25U key to line up with the size of those two 1U keys. That's what we have here. I'll put it switched in the middle. And I can select both by clicking and dragging over the whole selection and moving it with M from the center and going straight up. Now here you see stabilizers overlapping switches and that's okay because you won't have the stabilizer and the switch installed at the same time. Um, you, the stabilizer uh, hook will only occupy like the top half of the circle anyway, but the stabilizer screw actually goes out the full width of the outer um, gold circle here. So be careful not to have this part of a stab uh, collapse with any other part of the, of the switch footprint. So that's the switches laid out, but if we zoom out a little bit farther, we still have our diodes in Pro Micro. So our diodes here are also numbered, and thankfully earlier we've numbered them in relation to the other switches, so we know where they go pretty easily. And our Pro Micro here is similar to uh, last time, but uh, it's still kind of, where do you put it? Uh, we'll figure that out soon, but let's do our, our diodes first. I wanna go ahead and take all of our diodes and um, 
flip them with F and rotate them with R until you see that a little arrow bit is pointed downwards. This will match our schematic where the arrow is pointed downwards. Uh, this means that um, all the diodes will be facing the same direction in the schematic and on the PCB. So I'll just take all the diodes, M and then R and then F to flip. M, R, F. M, R, F. Now I'll just take a diode, say D6 for example, and hit M to move it. And sometimes you might grab it by the pad. Sometimes I might grab it by the center. I find that if I click it, move away, and then hit M with my mouse, it'll grab the center pad more, more often. Um, this is, sorry, this is D9, not D6. Uh, and when you move it, it'll show you with the air wire where it needs to go. I like to put these directly between uh, the large and small holes of the switches. This will go on the back side of the PCB, so the switch won't interfere with it. And because it's within the footprint of the switch, this 14 millimeter square, um, you have lots of space for routing traces outside of the switch footprint. In fact, I actually like to bring it um, to the center of, of this and then bring it down one grid notch. And again, the grid size is 0 0.7937 millimeters. I'm gonna grab another diode, that's D4 this time, and bring it over to D4. Bring it to the center and bring it down one grid notch. And I'm going to do this for all the diodes and all the switches, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so now we have the diodes placed underneath the switches. I have to figure out where to put the Pro Micro. We could, like last time, rotate the Pro Micro sideways and find a switch to center it on vertically such that the pins don't uh, cross over these uh, purple lines, or in some cases they're yellow lines, uh, which indicate the switch footprint. But I think this time I want to actually put the Pro Micro, uh, sort of hit it back vertical, just to the side here. Um, it sounds kind of strange, but uh, this means that the Pro Micro is actually going to be visible on top of the PCB, and uh, perhaps we can put some kind of artwork, branding, or maybe some extra keys down here on the bottom. Uh, in fact, why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and add two more keys on the right-hand side here um, to kind of make it an arrows layout. Um, we can do like up, down, left, right. Maybe put a little macro key here. Uh, so let's go back to our schematic and add two more switches. We'll add one. Just here, and just above it. And we'll grab two more diodes. I'll add those in the, sorry. We'll add those, uh, not like this. But we'll add the diodes to the same row, and then we'll make a new column for these switches. Let's and bring that up to the top, just kind of let it hang out up here. We'll get that in a little bit. Oh, uh, spare wire, <laughs> delete that. All right, so going back to the PCB, we can update, annotate, get those new diodes and switches, go ahead and put them in place. So that's switch 41, and that's switch 40, diode 40, and diode 41. Wonderful. I want this Pro Micro to be centered vertically above these switches. I'm going to go ahead and put it there and follow its trace line up. And go ahead and make it centered like that. All right. So let's get to routing. First task, actually, ooh, wrong button, is to hit the route tracks button. Also, the X key on your keyboard it starts making tracks. Um, I want to do this on the bottom layer, so I'll hit V to switch to the bottom layer. And I'm gonna start in the top left here and connect each of the switch, uh, the right switch pads to the pad of the diode down next to it. I do this for all of the switches so that all the diodes are connected to their respective switches. Okay, so now all of the switches 
are connected to their diodes, we can connect all the diodes together still on the bottom row with just one long line uh, from each diode to each diode. And because we notched those diodes down by 0.79375 millimeters, um, the row connection slips just underneath the, uh, the switch, uh, the center switch hole. Let's connect all these lines together. And for sake of brevity, uh, if things are really actually lined up, you can just make one giant line from one end to the other. This makes editing things later a bit of a pain, but I don't think we'll be editing these, these lines at least. Columns go similarly. I like to do columns from the top layer so they can cross the bottom, uh, the bottom layer. The top layer is the red one, so let's hit V to switch to the top layer, and we'll see the little indicators in the top layer now, front CU, front copper. And we can connect these, go straight down, and then just to the side at an angle to the next switch, wherever that is. Go straight down. Now, if it's crossing over like this, uh, you can hit the slash question mark key on your keyboard to change its direction. And we'll do all that for all the columns here. Okay, so I've done all of the columns except for these on the bottom row. As you can see, the air wires go through stabilizer holes, and no matter how I flip them, they will always go through something. You see where the green um, indication of something is colliding. Um, so, and these also don't really line up that well. This switch makes more sense to be connected to the one right above it, as well as this one right above it. And this also has the same issue of colliding with the stabilizer hole. So let's, ish, let's uh, go through this kind of diagonal connection first. I much prefer them to be vertical, so I want to um, make these electrically scoot over to the left, basically, by one column. So let's go to our schematic here and find those two switches. I think that's switch uh, 35 and 36. Yes, so let's go to 35 and 36 and see, we need to move them to the left. So I'll go ahead and select the wire connecting them, the switch itself, and the diode they're connected to. And I'm gonna hit the M key to move them. I can just move them to the left on this grid. I can save, Alt-Tab, and then update the PCB. And then now they want to be connected to the switches right above them. For these with a the stabilizer, we're going to route this in more than just two clicks. <laughs> we're going to go up, come over the stabilizer to the side, and then snake our way up to the switch above. Up over the stabilizer, and then snaking our way up to the switch above. There we go. That's our columns and rows routed. Now, the only thing to do is to connect all the columns and rows to the ProMicro. We're using 10 columns and four rows, plus the extra column for these two switches on the right. So that's 11 columns and four rows. We will need four, or 15 IOs. And on the ProMicro, uh, it's kind of hard to see, I don't know if this still screen, we have um, two by eight, kind of. We have like 16 pins to work with in the bottom, and we have two extra ones in the top if we need to. I like to stick with just using these 16. So the, the simplest thing to do here is just to route all of these traces near the Pro Micro until um, we're kind of out of space. And because this Pro Micro kind of, the bottom of it comes out to this edge, I want to use uh, the space between these switches as kind of like a, a pathway for a lot of our traces to go. I'm going to start with the uh, top row and I'll work my way uh, kind of inwards from there. The top row kind of wants to go towards this D1. It also kind of want to go through this D2. And also note that these um, actually have pin numbers in them. So that's pin 17 and that's pin 14. And that corresponds to what pins on the uh, the schematic. I'm actually going to take this to D2. That way I give myself a little bit more room to work with here on the lower lower rows. So to do that, I know that this is going to be this row, uh, it's this top row to D2. So I could wire that like with a wire. Take this top row and wire it to D2, which is pin 14. That gets quite messy. So instead of that, 
I'm going to come over to the right side and find this add a global label uh, button. And we're going to call this row zero. We'll start with zero index stuff here today. You can fly over me and that in the comments. Uh, we'll copy paste and make all of these rows uh, their own individual row label. That's row two and row three. All right, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the columns. Um, and I'll spare you the time for that, but we're gonna call this column zero and then work our way from left to right. All right, as we do our last column here, I'm just pasting what I had copied on my clipboard. Hit the E key to edit and I can add um, text to that label. Now, this does get a bit cluttered. Uh, everything's kind of overlapping. So I can just select my labels and move them, um, but move them and keep them connected with the G key, G for grab. We'll grab those and they stay connected to their respective uh, nets, but we can just move them up and out of the way so we can see them a bit easier. All right. Stabilizers do not be connected because they don't have any electrical properties. So we, we remembered um, we we're going to put this first row, row zero, we'll update the PCB here so it shows it on the diode itself, row zero to pin 14, which is D2. And similarly, I think I want to put um, row one. Uh, probably on D1. And you do this um, D1, which is pin, I think it's 17. Yes, 17. And this is tedious, but it makes sure that the routing is going to be as um, kind of straightforward as possible. So back in the PCB editor, when we update the PCB with those connections, we now see those air wires or rat's nest wires that tell us to connect them. And we can do that. I'm going to do this from the bottom. Just kind of snake it up. There we go. Perfect. I want to make a bus with the rest of these columns. So I've got one, two, three, what, 10, 11 columns. Um, and I think I can fit probably 10 traces within this kind of space between the top of a, a switch footprint and the, and the bottom of the diode footprint. Um, let me go ahead and get the uh, last two rows here connected. I want to try to aim for B2 and B6. So this one I think will come up this way and probably hit, uh, probably hit B2 right there. And this will come up this way as well. And that'll hit... And yeah, that'll hit B6 right there. Let's go ahead and update that in the schematic. Sorry, B2 and B6 are 11 and 12, so that's for the row two and three. Go to pins 11 and 12. So row two, pin 11, and row three goes to pin 12. We'll save, Alt-Tab, update. We have those air wires denoting they need to be connected. And there they are. I can get rid of this extraneous little bit with the delete key. Now I need 11 more connections to go down kind of the center here uh, to flesh out all these columns. I don't know if I can fit all 11 traces. So let's give this a try. I don't really need to though. I can connect this one pretty much directly to, uh, to B3. Let's, let's do column 10 directly to B3 and then we'll, then we'll continue. So column 10 to B3, I think it's pin 10. I'm just basing these judgments on what is nearest by. What can I reach? Now B5 is the near is the closest, but if I connect it to B5 now, I can't put traces through here on the on the red side. If I connect it to B3 and use the bottom side, um, everything stays tucked out of the way. So I still have all this open space to put traces up into the Pro Micro. 
So I'm going to try to get um, now nine traces out of this pro micro, and uh, let's see what we can do. And I can do B1. Let's follow it. Um, we're still on this 0.7935 grid. Follow it closely to this we made already, and then put it right above there. That's one. Two. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's nine traces. That'll get us, um, I think, the rest of the way. Or do we need 10? Uh, yes, we need a 10th trace. Let's grab that there. All right, so these 10 traces are gonna form what's considered a bus. This isn't usually good electrical practice, but for keyboards, it does not matter. And I wanna do this in kind of an order. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on column nine, and then the next one down on the next column over, and we'll continue. So this is C6 for column nine, column eight is D7. So let's try to uh, map this out. It kind of goes, uh, counterclockwise here, which means it'll go clockwise on the schematic just because of the way we have this flipped around. So this is pin 20 for column nine. Which means this will be column eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so let's, up, let's uh, go back to here. Sorry, I didn't mean to save it. Save and update. So now we see columns 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And this should also be, I don't know if this is going to record, but 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can just see it on... Uh, the text in the trace, like right there is column zero. I think I actually have column zero and column through column four flipped the wrong way. I want them to, um, I want column zero to be at the very bottom and go the longest distance. So let's take column four through column zero. Select those. Right click and mirror vertically. <laughs> that simply flips them vertically. I'll update those. Okay. Now when we go to trace, what gets highlighted is the column itself. We press V to add a via. We can connect a via directly to the um, the column trace and connect those those uh, the pin from the Pro Micro to the pin or to the column for these switches. Now, because I have these uh, rows going in, the next one's going to go below it. It needs to go past it. When I connect the via, actually, I want the via to be a little bit above uh, where this trace is. It kind of like scoops up. I don't know if you saw that, but see how this via trace scoops uh, this this trace scoops up. That way, when the row comes by, it doesn't collide with the via. If I had made the via trace scoop down, when I went and put the next trace down, it would have collided. So I'm going to trace out all of these columns. Find the one that scoops up just a little bit. Go to the next one. I 
could be panning with my middle mouse, but my middle mouse button is broken. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it doesn't work that well. There we go. All right, so now all the columns have been connected with long traces back to the Pro Micro. The final thing to do um, with the board is kind of to flesh it out. We need to give it an outline, and then um, for aesthetic reasons, I want to put a copper fill on both sides. So I want to um, go to this preset selection and uh, find all layers and that shows everything it'll show silk screens it'll show masks and user drawings um, but importantly it'll show the edge cuts layer as well now unfortunately a default KiCad 6 the edge cut and the user drawings are pretty much the same color i can't tell them apart uh, they're very light gray but on the edge cuts layer i want to draw um, draw a line and that's Control shift l on the keyboard or it's also this kind of diagonal gray line on the sidebar here and I want to come in exactly one notch, uh, which is 0.79375 millimeters from the edge of the switch footprint. Um, and that's where we're going to have our first corner of a line. I'm going to make a line all the way to the very far side. I don't know how far this goes because it kind of needs to go, it needs to go over the pro micro, but it doesn't need to overshoot the switches in the bottom. So I'm just going to leave it hanging until we get to that later. We'll go to the bottom left corner and do the same thing. At the time, we're going to go up to the top right and connect to the previous point we had before. Starting from the bottom left again, I'm going to go to the bottom right and find that spot uh, just inside, just one grid point inside the, uh, the far right switch. And then I'm going to take this vertical all the way to that other line we had left hanging. I'm going to take the line we have left hanging grab its endpoint, so we're moving it around, and move it uh, so it's in line with that vertical line. Now when we press Alt-3 to see it in 3D, we should see our PCB in 3D. Um, Shift-Z shows the backside. Here we can see our diodes, and we can see our Pro Micro footprint is on both sides. Z to bring it back to the front. So we're looking pretty good so far. These 90 degree corners are very sharp and actually kind of hurt when you get them produced. I like to put a radius on these. I find the grid point that is just inside the, the yellow or purple part of the switch footprint. And I draw an arc. I start from the left and I work my way to the top. Now this arc is also on the edge cuts layer. So I need to bring the edges from the edge cut um, earlier uh, down and to the right to match the centers of the arc. You'll get this circled crosshair when things line up. I can go ahead and copy and paste that arc by centering my mouse in the center of the arc while hitting Control C. That way when I paste, it's pasting from the center of the arc. I can then rotate that around and duplicate those copy those uh, those corners. To all four corners. Sometimes it gets stuck here. You can just move it a little bit up. It's trying to be concentric with this uh, graphic corner of the switch footprint. It does not need to be. Okay. Now, do note that this trace coming down along the far edge does need to be inside of this edge cuts layer uh, line. So here, we're just inside of it, was the next snap over is the line itself. So that works out just all right. So now when we go to the 3D view, we have much nicer 
rounded corners. These are going to be much nicer to handle and won't hurt. Last thing to do is to add a ground fill. So let's add a filled zone. Control Shift Z on your keyboard or this blue button. It's like a ISO or a big, a big enter key. Um, now I started this in the edge cuts layer. That's not going to be right. We don't want to fill in the whole thing with edge cuts. That would delete our board. So let's go to the copper layer. Just select it with your mouse. Go to that filled zone button. Now we can select front and bottom copper. If you had a ground net, which we don't. Um, you would do that, but in our case, we'll just use no net. We'll make a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to cover your whole board. Double click at the end to complete the drawing and hit B on your keyboard to fill the zone. I don't know why B, but it's B. Alt three, and now we have an aesthetic copper fill. Kind of lightens the whole board. Makes it look a little bit more official. From here, it's up to you to add mounting hardware, different edge cuts to fit different cases, um, hole patterns for screws. And we're not going to go into detail here on that. Um, you can also add silk screen text, you have a little branding, um, add it to either F silk screen or B silk screen front or back, and do what you need to there. Um, so that's the PCB. Uh, this should work. And um, it would be a simple matrix to the Pro Micro. Uh, see you next time.